Hey, how's it going guys? Got a knife review for you today. What you're looking at here is the Benchmade 580 Barrage. Um, I want to thank my buddy Jonah for letting me borrow this. He just got this knife, so he was kind enough to let me borrow this for a day. So I got to knock this review out so I can return it to him because, uh, I mean, if I got a new knife, brand new, I wouldn't want to share it at all either. But uh, before we actually get to that, let me just show you this Benchmade Blue Box. Everybody always likes unboxing. This is kind of a half unboxing because he's already opened this, but just to show you what it looks like in the packaging. Very nice job. You have the uh, serial number label right here with the barcode. Got a little uh, thank you note on the back right here. And also the cool thing about this is Benchmade knives are packaged extremely sharp and limited lifetime warranty. So I've heard of a lot of people like um, they'll strip the screws or something goes wrong with their knife, they send it over to Benchmade and I've heard nothing but good things about their customer service. I mean I hear they take care of their customers very well. Anyways, on to the knife itself. Open this up. Got this nice little padded thing right here. More padding. Got a little description of what the access lock is like, how it works, and I'll show you that in a second. Plus a little Karen manual right here with some instructions and a little warranty card that you can mail in. And then almost every Benchmade I've seen has like a little care pouch, which I think is pretty slick. I never use it because any knife I buy I'm going to carry, but it's always a nice little touch to have. And here we have the knife. So this is one of uh, Benchmade's assisted access locks. Um, as you can see, there's a spring inside, so all I have to do is exert a little bit of pressure on the thumb stud, and the knife will pop out on its own. You can see that was pretty fast. Now for those people who aren't familiar with how an access lock works, it is a similar kind of mechanism concept to a back lock in that uh, you have a little notch on the back of the blade and it uh, hinges. Uh, you can't actually see the hinge for the blade right here. And then what happens is instead of a kind of a like a back lock or a mid lock on uh, most other knives that you would push a button, what you have is a bar right here that extends on both sides. So this isn't actually just a button, it's a bar that goes from left and right. See, I can move it. And then when I slide this bar out of the way, it disengages and the knife can go free. Kind of hard, I have to keep holding on because of the spring tension on this blade. And as I slide this knife open, the bar slides into place like that. Now, blade can't be closed because this bar is blocking it. So that's how it works. Uh, there's tension uh, on this uh, bar right here from what they call Omega Springs and uh, there's a separate spring inside that gives it tension going the other way to open. Uh, opens very smooth, just a little bit of pressure, uh, not hair triggerish, but I don't have to put that much pressure on it for the knife to open up really fast. And to close it, that's one of the uh, disadvantages of having an assisted lock. It opens really easy one-handed, but to close it, you're going to need two hands because even if I disengage the access lock, I can't flick it or anything. There's a spring tension holding it open, so I need to use my other hand. Or I could just press it up against my body, I guess, and push it close. Now, I feel spring tension up until about mm, here, the last inch or so, and then the spring disengages and the knife has tension that keeps it closed. So I have to fight a little bit of a tension. It feels like a, a, a little bit, like an op opposing spring. But once you beat that tension up till about here, it slides open. Very smooth, uh, no grittiness whatsoever. And it locks up very solidly. Little bit of play side to side. But that's to be expected from uh, something that's assisted. Um, anytime that you add like pieces and stuff, I get a little bit worried. But there's no up and down play, so that's good. Blade itself is made out of 154 cm, and maybe I can give you a little bit closer look at the lock here. I just got a new magnifying glass. See there, you can see the bar. Dual thumb studs on both sides and they're very well machined. 154 cm is a very good uh, blade steel. Uh, it's equivalent to ATS-34 which is the Japanese kind of copy of 154 cm and it's also equivalent to uh, VG-10 which is uh, mostly seen in Spyderco knives. So not a cheap steel. 
very nice. Uh, 154CM seems to be like the standard steel that you'll find in most Benchmade folders these days. And according to this little label right here, this is an Osborne design. Doesn't say in the uh, specs on my laptop right here. I'm looking up on the website, but from the field, the handle seems to be made out of FRN, which is a fiberglass reinforced nylon. Uh, it's pretty solid. Uh, resists warping, cracking, doesn't absorb water, dries really quickly. So I'm a big fan of FRN. Um, I just think it's a nice feeling, even compared to like things like my Carter G10. It has a place. It's lighter yet uh, almost as durable, and it kind of cuts down on costs of the knife. If this were made with something like say G10 cost would shoot up significantly so it's a nice color compromise you got these little thumb grooves right here and I got small hands but as I wrap my hand around it you'll notice that the grooves fit my fingers um, just right we'll see how it fits with somebody with uh, medium hands very well contoured you got a little bit of uh, aesthetic um, cuts into the blade but I wish they added more in just to add more traction these are more like aesthetic it doesn't really add too much traction you have a slight little ram coming up here for your thumb and then a little bit of a rise right here for your hand just to kind of keep it from sliding up. Would have liked jimping here on the back side on the handle scales and underneath just to add that feeling of traction when I'm holding it in a saber grip so that my hand doesn't feel like it's going to slip up. But the natural shape of the handle itself does that very well. Fills the hand very well and even if I switch it to reverse grip, I mean anything that's assisted opening, I'm going to guess it's going to be used for tactical, like self-defense purposes. Works just well. It's very comfortable. It's held in right here by some Torx screws. Now, for anything that's assisted, I would really recommend against trying to take this knife apart. It looks like you can if you had a Torx screw set, but hopefully you're handy with your knives because anything like uh, this complicated. I'd probably just be mailing back a box of parts to Benjamin and asking him to put it back together if I took it apart. As you can see right here, it has steel liners to add a little bit of strength. And I don't know if you can see it. Hopefully the magnifying glass can help a little bit. But the liners are skeletonized. Can I get that? Unfortunately, it's really hard to see. But take my word for it. So hopefully, uh, by skeletonizing the liners, you're not really detracting from the strength, but you do save a little bit of weight on the knife. Right here, have a pocket clip that, as you can see, can be moved left or right, but only um, tip up carry. So, sorry guys for people who like to carry a tip down. Knife out of the box is razor sharp. Now this is the 580 model. There's actually several different permutations. The 580 uh, is this version right here with the drop point blade. If it's a 583, um, everything is the same for the handle. It just has a, a Tanto point blade. Same length and everything, same blade steel. It's just 580 is a drop point, 583 is the Tanto. And then you have the 585, which is the mini barrage, and that means the blade is uh, less than 3 inches, about 2.91 inches. And if you add the BK uh, at the end of it, that means the blade has been blackened. So for example, a 583 BK would be a Tanto blade with a black uh, coating on top of it. So, to end off, let me just read you some specs. Total blade length is 3.6 inches. Blade thickness is 0.121 inches, so about uh, an eighth of an inch. But as you can see, you have almost a full flat grind, but it's also ground here at the top as well. So it's not really at its thickest point in the middle of the blade right here. It's an eighth of an inch, but it tapers up and it tapers down. Makes it uh, really well. This almost full flat grind means it's going to cut really well and also by doing this top cut right here you're going to save a little bit of weight and uh, the handle thickness is 0.65 inches I already said this is uh, 154 cm stainless steel and it's been hardened to a 58 to 61 Rockwell hardness overall length is 8.35 inches and the closed length is 4.75 inches Overall weight is 4.2 ounces, which is a little bit heavier, but not outrageously so. Um, when I hold it, it doesn't feel like 4.2 ounces. Um, just between the skeletonized liners and uh, the quality of the bill, it doesn't feel like a heavy knife when I have it in my hand and when I put it in my pocket. So even though it says 4.2 ounces, don't feel like this is a heavy knife. It actually carries a lot lighter than the stats would say. Last thing I want to talk about here is, um, you'll see it's a closed off design on the back. And right here is the safety. So if I push it forward, 
like so, you can see that it disengages the spring tension right there and puts a lock, drops that bar, puts a lock on it so I can't open the knife at all. So as a safety feature, say you want to put it in your pocket but you're really afraid that this is going to open your pocket, push it forward for the safety, won't work. Now, you can't just push it back. To disengage the safety, you have to push down and then back. So down and then back. And as you can see, the bar has lifted off of it, and I can open it up easily. Fully ambidextrous, doesn't matter. All you got to do is flip the pocket clip over, and it's uh, exactly the same ease to open it with your left hand. So don't worry about it. And the retail is about $150 on or sorry, $140 for the base model on the uh, Benchmade website. You can pay a little bit more for the black version, uh, $155. Um, but that's retail, that's like MSRP, so it's probably going to go for a little bit less when you go to an actual knife store or buy it online. So that's my little overview of the uh, Benchmade 580 Barrage. It's a nice knife, sexy, I like the uh, assisted opening. It's one of those things where um, uh, my friend actually got it as a gift from a friend. <laughs> I think uh, a girlfriend or something like that, so uh, that's that's love right there <laughs> when a chick buys you a knife. Anyways, um, yeah, it's it's one of those knives that I really like. Would never buy it for myself, but I'm so happy if someone got it for me. So uh, yeah, it's really nice, good build quality, bench made, um, warranty, and uh, the assisted opening is just really cool. So that's my little overview. Thanks for watching, guys, and uh, have a great day.